Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here or you've been here and haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help support the channel, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and all in all, a happier person. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, we're tucking to get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Unsettling Paranormal Experiences. Right after this intro, an ad will play. I'll read the first story an ad will play, and after that, there will be no more ads within this video. I was around five or six when this happened. I was in the northern Midwest region seeing family. The area of the state I was in was very rural and densely forested. I was sitting on the porch of the house. There's a couple houses next to us. But other than that, it's densely forested woods. I was sitting on the porch looking into the woods. When I see something, it noticed that I saw it and it hid behind the tree. This was probably maybe 30 or 40 feet away. I was scared as should be and ran into the house. I thought it was a bear at the time, but now thinking about it, it was impossible to have been a bear. While bears are in the area, the trees were too small to fit one, especially standing on its hind legs. It couldn't have been human either, by its size. Years later, I started to get into this stuff and learn folklore, and it started to match. I later found out the area was inhabited by natives. Historically, it wasn't a living thing, and I swear it was getting closer now. Thinking about it, the forest was quiet, which is not normal. Thinking about it now, I still go there sometimes with family, but I also still wonder if this thing was still tracking me. Disclaimer, this next story involves a dog, but it's not too graphic. Listening discretion is advised. I lost my beautiful angel a couple days ago. He was almost four and so full of life. His name was Blue, a little Australian shepherd. He was with me through everything and truly saved my life. He was an angel sent to me and too pure for this world. You could just feel it. He was the smartest dog I have ever had. He was so spiritually inclined and would always see things. I am pretty spiritual too, I'd like to say, but obviously animals have a different view on the realm. I believe he and most animals live completely in the divine, which is what causes them to love unconditionally. They are divine beings. He was a herding breed and would always chase my husband's truck and golf cart. Two days ago, he was chasing the truck and I was watching atop our new cabin we just built with our bare hands. Life was finally getting good, and we were getting out of this fucked up world. I think there may have been a spirit attached onto me from an EDM concert we went to four months ago. They conducted satanic rituals on stage, and it was just pure evil. There were gypsies everywhere, and I was battling some pretty hardcore demons trying to get into me. I get so distracted with the things they want you to get distracted with, like work, money, all the bullshit the world comes with. So it gets hard for me to differentiate and realize that this isn't my divine self saying shit in my head and draining my energy. I was watching from our cabin as we were building a deck and we just needed some concrete from the truck. I was watching the dogs chase the car, and all of a sudden, I saw Blue's little body on the road. My husband was going nothing more than 10 miles an hour. He died in my arms, and I felt something off-putting. 
I could sense the death, which I am still trying to figure out, about a week ago. But I thought it was our older family dog back home, not my young vibrant boy. I heard a voice in my head. He was going to die. Then the car kept going, and I saw his body laying on the road. It felt planned. We gave him a beautiful burial, and he may rest in peace now. I know people probably try to make sense of a sudden traumatic death, but like I said, I knew things were latched to me and it didn't feel natural. My husband didn't feel him at all, and his injuries just didn't make sense. If his neck got under the wheel again at under 10 miles an hour, dogs have been hit at 60 miles per hour and just kept running. I thought his paw may have been broken, but not an instant death like what happened. Later, I saged our house and told whatever the hell was messing with us to leave us alone and they are no longer welcome. I walked to my bed after and a photo of him as a puppy had been placed face down as if it was a laugh in my face. Has anyone ever encountered anything like this? I am feeling spiritually attacked and need to know I'm not insane. So this all started when I was around 14, so 12 years ago. My younger brother and I decided to swap rooms. From the first night I slept in my new room, weird things started happening. I usually sleep through the night, but I was suddenly awoken at exactly 2.17 a.m. on the dot every single night. Each time I would wake up, I always felt that sixth sense that something or someone was watching me from the right corner of my bedroom. Always. I felt good energy from spirits before when family members have passed, but this was something different. It seemed invasive, intimidating, and I was freaked out that whatever this was could see me, but I couldn't see it. What's weird was when I slept at my mom's house, I never woke up at 2.17, only at my dad's house. Then, small occurrences started to happen. I was staying at my mom's when my dad informed me my alarm clock radio turned on by itself in the middle of the night at full volume and woke the whole family up. I hadn't been to his house in days. When I was home again, my little brother and I would play in the driveway. He had to go to the bathroom, so he went in the garage. One night, I had heard paper shuffling on my desk, even though the windows were closed. A different morning, I watched my dad's sunglasses on the kitchen counter move several inches by themselves when I was the only one awake. My older sibling began to believe me when random lights would come on by themselves in the house. What's strange is we caught on to the pattern that paranormal activity would happen mostly when my little brother was home. Fast forward to when the house was empty since my parents were on vacation. My grandma would check in on the house with my siblings, and each time they'd go back, a new light would be on. The last night before my parents came back from vacation, she triple-checked everything. All the lights were off. My parents were surprised when they arrived home to find every light on in the house. My grandma swore our house was cursed and refused to visit anymore. My stepmom then began to believe my paranormal stories. My older brother and I heard footsteps running up and down the stairs together one night when my younger brother was at a sleepover. It really freaked us out. At one point, it even got dangerous. The gas stove burners had been turned on by themselves on low heat overnight. If any of this had been a prank previously, I can guarantee no one in our family would mess around like that, putting all of our lives in danger. My dad finally began to believe me about eight months into this haunting, when all the kids weren't home one night, and he heard whispering in the hallway. He freaked out and grabbed his knife, thinking there were robbers. 
When he opened the door, he found my TV had turned on by itself, and people were talking on the TV with low volume. The last thing to ever happen was one night. I had come out of the shower, and I went to change in my room. The mirror was foggy from the steam. My older brother knocked on my door and asked what I wrote on the mirror. Confused, I went to look, and we both sat there in awe as the letters began to show up in front of us very slowly. The whole family gathered around to decipher it. It said, I am watching. The last word we couldn't figure out. Our family didn't know how to justify what we had just seen. After that day, the occurrences stopped. I stopped waking up every night. A year later, my dad called me and said he found something really weird on my brother's birth certificate. He asked, didn't you used to say that Nick, that was my younger brother, was somehow connected to the haunted stuff that happened in the house? After confirming, he casually mentioned that my younger brother was born at exactly 2.17 a.m. I was speechless. This was no coincidence. From that day on, I had so many more questions than answers. Two years ago, I had a psychic medium meeting and after sharing my story, she said how the entity targeted me because I acknowledged it. I was no longer in the house. She confidently said an entity like that is attached to an object or a person that has since left the house. I definitely think something was attached to my younger brother. My mom, stepdad, and I lived in our house for around 15 years. I'm 21. Mom says I've had a presence attached to me since I was a baby. And that tracks because there is a very obvious presence attached to me even still in our house that just lurks in my room. None of that bothers me, nor do the stories. Things we've seen in the corner of our eyes, stuff that's moved or eerie feelings we've gotten in our time there. But then, this morning, something new and a whole different level of terrifying happened. My mom left for work at 5.30. I heard her car pull out of the driveway. Then, at 6, the garbage man came and my dog freaked out. He was in the living room, and I was laying in bed down the hall waiting for him to calm down. Then, I heard a woman say his name very clearly, loudly, and concisely. He kept barking, and I perked up, thinking either my mom was still home or I was hearing things. I just brushed it off when I heard her again. She said, be quiet, and sure enough, my dog stopped barking. I texted mom to make sure she was not home, and she told me she had been gone for 30 minutes, as I expected. So I went through the house, and nobody was there. It could not have been anyone else. Nobody would have just shown up at 6 a.m., scolded my dog, and then left. Mom asked what happened, and I told her, and she told me that a week ago she was asleep in her room when she heard a woman loudly say, Oh, right beside her ear, and she bolted up. She said that she was sure she heard it, but had felt like she was going crazy until I told her what I just heard this morning. We described it to each other, and it's the same. A mature woman's voice. It cannot be a squatter, or at least we're pretty sure it's not. We have a crawl space that is impossible to access without knocking a bunch of stuff off of a shelf in front of it, and an attic that is impossible to access without opening the extremely loud and heavy door. What I'm wondering is why this entity, whatever it was, has decided to all of a sudden become vocal in a way we've never seen or heard here, especially before when we've been here for over a decade. Any insight would be greatly appreciated because I am terrified.
Back in the early 2000s, my friends and I were into ghost hunting for a few months. We would search out and go to the most haunted places we could find, especially around our area. We went to many places, but only one yielded something that still creeps me out to this day. I'll start off by telling how this house is haunted. This house was in Chino, California. It's demolished now. And in Chino, there is also a men's prison. Back in the 80s, I believe, this guy, I don't know what his name is, escaped the prison and found a home to hide out in. Back in the day, this was a rural community, mostly cows with houses few and far in between. The house we broke into had a family living inside. Mother, father, and two kids, boy and a girl. In a nutshell, he cut the boy's throat, killed the girl in front of the parents, then murdered both of the parents, one in front of the other. He stayed there for a week or two before he left or got caught. I don't remember which. Anyway, fast forward to our ghost hunting trip. We eventually pull up to this house, of course in the middle of the night because why not? The house, even though this was years ago, was still there, but all fenced up, boarded up windows, and crime scene tape with signs saying to keep out, graffiti all over the house. This is typical. My friends and I found our way through the fence and into the backyard area where a window had already had the boards removed and the window busted out. A couple of us had self-defense tools in case we ran into any unsavory people and also a camera to take pictures. There were five of us. We each went through the broken window one by one and waited for each other until we were all through. The inside of the home was completely empty except for smashed family pictures still on the walls. Graffiti also dawned the inside of the house. The most creepy things were written on the walls and ceiling of the living room and the other rooms. Things like, death is here, do not enter, etc. The window we went through led us right into the middle of the living room. Right behind that was the kitchen. All the pantry doors were open. As we walked through the house, we all formed a sort of conga line with me in the back. We walked around the living room first and then the kitchen. The entire time, my buddy is taking random snapshots with his camera the same camera we have been using for all of our different haunted locations, mind you. As the lead person goes into the hallway, we stop and look into the hallway closet to confirm a part of the story. The escaped prisoner had gruesomely sliced the boy's throat in an attempt to kill him. Little did he know, that boy crawled into the hall closet and held his throat, kept it from bleeding out, all while he watched the rest of his family get murdered right in front of him. When I opened the closet door that night, I could say about 70% of that carpet on the floor was soaked with old blood. It was definitely true. We continued along the hallway, and every room had super creepy and very eerie messages that left my skin crawling. We finally made it to the master bedroom where the parents were tied up and made to watch their children die and ultimately them being murdered in cold blood. Again, the carpet had old blood splattered all over it and that entire room just had this overall sense of darkness to it, like a cold pressure. It was off-putting to say the least. As you entered the room, there was a light switch to the right on the wall. Right next to it was the creepiest message of them all. It gave me the tingles. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it read something like, Do not lock anyone alone in this room. Do not do it. This is not a joke. Please, for the love of God, don't. Needless to say, that creeped us the hell out. It didn't take us too long to explore the entire house. It wasn't that big. As we made our way out, I was still in the back of the line, and my buddy with the camera was still taking the occasional photo. 
It's the middle of the night and cold out still. Pitch black in this house, except for one flashlight we remembered to bring. Then, just as we were leaving the hallway, I heard a little girl moan as clear as day. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up, and again gave me that tingly feeling. I specifically remember this next part. I remember I was going to ask the person in front of me if they heard that little girl moan, but, but then I didn't say it like that because I didn't want to influence their answer. So I asked just like this. Do you hear something? I remembered asking it exactly that way. The person in front of me turned their head in slow motion with eyes wide open and said to me, I just heard a little girl moan. We both stood there in disbelief, shocked. There are no other houses around. This place was on acres of farmland. We were absolutely the only ones in this house. It scared the shit out of us. I don't know how to explain it, but it sounded sad and with anguish, like it came from a deep and dark place. We ran out of that place so fast, one of my friends got cut on the window sill. The biggest dude in our group was that six foot two. He's a big black guy. Couldn't make it back to the car because he was so terrified that he couldn't move his legs. He was on the floor outside, bawling his eyes out. He was saying stuff like, the devil is in that house. One of the girls that was with us had to take him by hand and comfort him before he could get up and get to the car. That was our last expedition to anywhere haunted. A few days later, my buddy uploaded those photos to his computer. As we went through them, we noticed all the pictures before and after the house were perfectly fine and clear, but the photos from the Cooper house were filled with orbs. It was the craziest thing to see, orbs floating in the middle of the room. I wished I had those photos still, but it wasn't my camera, and this was before smartphones. About 15 years or so later, maybe 2020, I randomly see a newspaper on my mom's dinner table. No one gets those anymore, right? Anyway... Well, I see off to the right side on the front page that the escaped convict was finally being put to death. Decades after everything happened, I thought it was weird how that came full circle. I ain't never seen newspapers anymore, but there it was. Also, from what I understand, the young boy whose throat was slit ended up in a mental institution for the rest of his life still gives me the tingles to this day just thinking about it. Okay, so I worked as a beauty therapist in a day spa located in a small block of about six shops located close to the beach in Brighton, South Australia. There were often times I would work alone on a Thursday night for late night shopping while all the other shops would close at 5 p.m. around me. Our heavy large glass doors had a bell on it attached to a chain so I could hear customers entering the store. However, during a beauty treatment, I would lock the glass doors as we had appointments booked and through the evening. One Thursday night, while I was alone and went to the toilet quickly in between clients, I always kept that door ajar so I could hear the door. As soon as I sat down, the freaking bell rang, so I rushed to get back out into the shop to greet the new customer. When I entered the store, I noticed nobody was there, so I thought maybe they came in and left. Anyway... During the night, I was shut in my beauty room doing a facial treatment, and I heard the doorbell and the chain rattle. I thought it must have been my boss as she would be the only person to be entering the store at that time of night with a key. As I heard high heels clicking down the tiled hallway, I left the room to get some hot water and set off down the hall. I could hear tap, tap. 
tap, click, click, on the keyboard to the office computer. I approached the office to expect to see my boss at the desk and I peeked in to find an empty room. The lights were on, the monitor was on. I stood there baffled, not understanding what was going on. I looked all around the salon for my boss, even opening the back door to the staff car park, and there was no sign of anyone. I wanted to share my thoughts with my client, but I didn't want to disturb her peace. Thankfully, nothing else happened that night, but I'm positive it had something to do with the graveyard that was across the road. It really spooked the hell out of me. The doorbell was known to ring and no one being there on several occasions to other staff members. It's just so weird. I couldn't explain it. This is memory from a few years ago that lives in my brain rent-free. Some important context. I live in the country of northern Michigan. My neighbors are about half a mile away on each side. My driveway is very long and I'm surrounded by woods. One night at about 3 a.m., I wanted to get a PB&J sandwich, so I was in my kitchen. I heard a knock on my door. My dad travels for work and he was supposed to come home that night, so without thinking, I went to answer the door. What I didn't know was my dad had arrived several hours earlier and was already in bed. A middle-aged woman with dark hair was at the other side of that door and she frantically said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I totally panicked and screamed and then slammed the door closed. My sister who was sleeping on the couch woke up and she saw the interaction that we had had. She totally deer in headlights froze and wouldn't respond when I asked her what to do. After about 45 seconds to a minute, I gathered my senses and thought she might need help, maybe be running from an abusive situation. So I opened the door again and she was gone, totally vanished. My land is pretty flat and there were no cars around or sight of her on the property. I screamed, if you need help, we can help you. Probably not a super safe choice, but I was 15 at the time and a bleeding heart. I woke up my dad and we searched the property and we drove around the street looking for the woman or a maybe broke down car, but nothing. It terrified me because the only place she could have made it without me seeing her would be the woods that has very overgrown grass that is extremely hard to walk through. She would likely have to sprint through it. If my sister didn't see her as well, I would have thought I made her up. I don't know if I believe in ghosts and try to logic everything out that maybe she was just an insanely fast crackhead. But everything about her presence seems logical and unlikely, so I wondered if she had even been a person at all. Any thoughts, expertise, or opinions would be appreciated. I was wide awake and a figure was sitting on the stool by my bed. They were smaller than a normal human, so it was weird to me. Like three-fourths or half the size and had long hair. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman's energy. I was dead set this was a real person and I was so scared, so I sat up and was talking to them saying, Hi, who are you? What do you want? and they were just staring at me. I reached for my phone, which was on my bed, and was so shocked when I put the torch on this person, preparing for them to be a real, actual human, and they were just gone. Nothing there. I'm still in a state of fear and shock and can barely move, so I just sat with my phone torch at this chair for minutes before I could look around and see 
that nothing was in my room. I asked the spirit to leave if it wasn't here for my highest good and tried to close off any negative energy, but I'm feeling pretty crazy right now. I had the sense that the spirit had been invited in by me and that it was waiting to watch me in some way. It was curious. I also bought a necklace carved by bone from an ancient temple today in the shape of a skull, and I'm currently wearing it, and wondering if it's any way connected. This sounds so crazy to me, as it probably does you, but any insights about similar experiences or tips and advice would be hugely appreciated right now. Thank you. When I was younger, my mom and I moved to Australia from South Africa when I was seven. We moved into this cute small cottage in a popular neighborhood. The house was old and a few areas were quite rusted. I remember that I would never go into the living room because it always terrified me. There was always some creepy, eerie aura in that room. About a few months into living at that house, I would wake up in the middle of the night due to loud, awful sounds coming from the kitchen. It sounded like pots and pans crashing into each other. I walked into the kitchen and there was nothing there. So I went back to bed. This happened every day. A few days after my mom and I were talking about the weird noises, when my mom said something that sent chills down my spine. Can you see her too? Those were the exact words my mom said. She told me she could see an old Italian lady in the kitchen, hitting pots and pans together, furious, yelling at us to get out of her house. A month later, still hearing those sounds, my mom and I were meeting our neighbors at a coffee shop. My mom asked her if by chance there was a little old Italian lady that used to live in our house. Our neighbor then said, How do you know? She died in that house just before you moved in. We were petrified. My mom then saw the lady again at night. She was more angry than ever. My mom told me the next morning that she told the lady we are kind and safe people and we will protect her house. We never saw her again and the living room was no longer eerie or creepy. To this day, I still don't understand how this happened. After moving out from the house where the incident involving black magic happened, we got the government quarters in a society that was exclusively for the families of individuals working in the forest department. It was a cheerful place, unlike the last one. There were many kids around my age, my school was close, and it was a well-knit neighborhood with friendly people. So much so that I was able to trespass into anyone's house, and they didn't mind. It is still one of the best places I had ever lived in. Because more than anything, it was adventurous. There were tall Ashoka trees all around, maybe Kacha houses, and an aura that was hard to beat. That place had an old world charm. The only unconventional part about the place was my house. It was of older times, probably built around British Indian era. It had a unique architectural style. The front hall had a flat roof, while the middle portion was raised into a dome. And at the very end, near the washroom and beyond, there was no roof. The first time we entered, there were many bizarre wall paintings in the middle portion that we didn't comprehend at all. There were two doors for the entry into the house, the front one and the one at the very back that opened in front of a fence, 
and behind that was the forest. There was a blackened dead tree across that was a victim of lightning. We had a beautiful garden that was adjacent to the house with lemon and custard apple trees. And at the end of that was our storehouse. We didn't know who lived there before. The caretaker never tells us much other than the person moving somewhere else. Still, we didn't want to take any risks, so we got a holy ritual done before we started living there. It was an interesting place. I made new friends and we used to play in the society compound all day long after school. The forest office was in the society itself, near the main gate. The place was surrounded with rocky terrains and forest. As kids, we explored a lot, and I often saw soldiers from afar marching around behind the terrains. There was another forest officer in the compound, which was old and was close forever. It was locked. The old office almost in front of my house, a diagonal distance. It was built on an elevated stage. It had high walls and a rotting structure. It was a home to many mossy outgrowths. It had no roof either. By the side of it was a burnt house, which was abandoned. Nobody went there. It was instructed by the temple priest and his wife, as there was a black dog that lived there, which had gone mad. We used to obey that, as it was near the forest, so poisonous snakes and monkeys were a daily sight. We had gotten used to it. The monkeys came in the evening at 5 o'clock, exactly. I had some really funny incidents with them. One day, we were playing cricket near the old office when an older boy played a aerial shoot into the building. There was no roof, so the ball went inside. I was sent to retrieve that, so I climbed on the edges of the bricks that were coming out of it near the terrain adjoining the office and got inside from above. It was a brain-deadening place with foul smells all around. I found some bones lying around in the trash, probably left by dogs. I came out and went about my business, but there was just something off about it. The next day, in the morning, my mom came to us while we were talking about some news. She had a dream last night. We were intrigued. She told us that she saw a dream in which there was a lot of treasure buried in our house. It was in the back wall of our storehouse, she said. Also, there was a voice that guarded it. She saw someone digging there in the dream. The man was faceless. We all went into the garden and opened the storehouse. The wall at the back was put up again. Someone did try to break it down. It wasn't painted and was mere bricks and cement, albeit thicker than the other ones. My mom did not proceed further. She said that she heard the voice in her dream, saying that to acquire the dream, no one has to sacrifice their children, and it can't be escaped or bargained, and she didn't want to take such a chance. We went inside. In a few minutes, we heard someone at the door. It was our neighbor that lived far in front near the main gate adjacent to the new office. He had walked all the way down to our place, and it was early in the morning. It was a bit surprising because we hadn't had much interaction with him. He had a confused expression. He saw my mom and told her, Auntie, you'll find it funny, but I had a dream last night, and it was about your house. He told us the exact same dream that my mother saw, and even the location about where it was. It was puzzling. While we were talking, we saw another girl walking towards us. She lived near the terrain, and to our surprise, even she had the same dream. Everyone wanted us to investigate now, but my mom. She was in no mood to do that. One thing that she wanted us to know about the place. The caretaker was questioned, and he revealed that the person who lived there 
was an Anglo-Indian of British descent. He lived some 22 years back and was a treasure explorer. He knew of the treasure in that place and he tried to search for it. It is said that he sacrificed his own son to get the wealth, but wasn't able to bear the guilt. He went crazy and disappeared. The broken wall was put up by someone at night, the day he disappeared. Nobody saw who did it. The man had murdered his son right in front of our washroom in the last section that opened near the forest. It gave me shudders because there were more frequent paper cuts in those days at night, and I used to take long showers at midnight. The idea of something lurking and guarding the walls and ancient treasure was enough to give me chills. We mutually decided not to do anything with it. We had to leave the town a year later. Okay, bear with me as I'm not the best at telling stories, but I'll recount my experience as best as I can. Also, this was my first post, so hi, I'm Leon. I was born in 1984 and lived in the same house until the age of 18. My parents had lived there beforehand with my sister, who was 18 months older than me. My mom would always complain to my dad about cold spots in the house and feelings of being watched. He just used to pass this stuff off as her being alone and spooking herself whilst he was working. My uncle, who was in the army, came to live with them for some time before I or my sister were born. He was younger and used to go on nights out. My mom and dad used to hear children playing out in the street regularly in the early hours, which they thought was strange but couldn't see anyone when they looked. The occasion that convinced my dad about the house was when one night they were in bed and my uncle was out. They woke up to tapping on their bedroom door. They thought it was my uncle, so they said, Come in. But he didn't and the tapping got louder to the point my dad got out of bed and, with a baseball bat, went to the door and opened it. To nothing. This was all before me and my sister's experiences started, and similar things kept happening. After we were born, things didn't stop. Another family member was sleeping in my sister's room on a pull-out bed and woke to my sister sat straight up in the bed, talking with no one. When she asked who she was talking to, she said the little girl sat on the end of the bed. Needless to say, the family member was spooked. So I myself had a few things happen. Some just bangs, others were footsteps, but two stick in my head. The first one was morning. I was set at the dining table eating breakfast with my mom and we heard my sister walk out of her room and start to come down the stairs. We could see the lower stairs from where we were sat, and they had a distinct sound as stairs do. My mother said, Oh, here she comes. And we watched the stairs as each step was being walked on, but no one was there. We went upstairs wondering what it was and found my sister asleep in her bed. The second was more unbelievable, and even to this day, I've questioned my mom and sister as to did we actually see this. My sister was 18, I was 17 at the time, and my sister had gotten pregnant young, so we had her baby in the house as well now. The baby was asleep in her cot upstairs in my sister's room and was too young to roll or crawl or climb, like a few weeks old. We were sat at the dining table, talking when we all heard and felt a massive bang. We all panicked and sprinted up to the stairs. We entered the room to find a washing maiden had fallen into the cot, 
and my niece was fast asleep on the floor, under where the maiden was resting on her cot. We were so puzzled that none of us knew what was happening. Sorry if this is a long-winded story, I'm trying to recall all that I can. Well, after that, we obviously told people until one day we were approved by a local historian who was writing a book and wanted to put our experiences in it. He also found out that our street was on the side of an old orphanage. Needless to say, he wrote the book and we are in it along with other ghost sightings in the area. Anyway, fast forward a few years. My parents had moved. I'm living in my own place and I'm working in a job and a new girl starts, Australian, and her family had moved to the area. We were talking one day and started talking about ghosts. She tells me she has two dogs that won't come into her bedroom as they just whine and act scared and tells me her house is haunted. I say, oh, my house was too. Then she tells me that her house had been written about and was in a ghost book. Turns out she had moved into my old house all the way from Australia and her room was my sister's room. I can't tell you how much that's too perfect for a coincidence. All this is true and are some of my memories from growing up. Any thoughts? I'm nearly 30 now and I still remember this experience like it was yesterday. I was curious to know if anyone else has had this happen in their lifetime. I was around seven years old. We had a huge two-story house where most of the living rooms and such were upstairs. The garage and laundry was downstairs. The stairs themselves were quite tall. Two flights of steps went to the top, made of some form of wood. My bedroom was the first room on the right at the top of these stairs. I was sound asleep one night, and then all of a sudden, I was dreaming of someone being in the laundry. Immediately following that, in my sleep, I heard this extremely loud thumping sound. Someone was running up the stairs, and it was in a hurry. I awoke, and I could still hear it, still running and it stopped. A second later, I heard breathing outside of my doorway. My door was open, as I usually like to sleep with the door open and keep the hallway light on back then. The breathing was still there. I was pretty much frozen and petrified at this point. Usually in bad dreams, as a wee kid, you could call out for your parents, right? I was literally too frozen and scared to do anything let alone call out. I laid down and faced the wall, not wanting to move, and I could still hear that breathing. I had a gut feeling something was just sitting outside the doorway. I woke up the next morning and I noticed one of my figurine toys had been moved around. That was the last thing I remembered from that experience. I then started to have been awful reoccurring dreams where in each house we moved to. These dreams lasted probably a good five to seven years. I would wake up in the dream. My door was open and I would look down the hallway from my bedroom and see someone sitting at the dining room table. In my dream, I would do the same thing, just lay back down and pretend I was asleep. However, in the dream, this figure would always get up, walk into my room, and put its hand over my face. I would always go through a motion where I would try to force myself to wake up, rolling my eyes around and back and forth, etc. Even trying to twitch my body and trying to yell. This strange figure, which I could never see since my eyes were closed in the dream, would try to suffocate me with its hands over my whole face 
to prevent me from waking up. I always woke up, thankfully. Has anyone else had experiences like this when they were a lot younger? Have you ever encountered someone who just radiates evil? Someone who darkness had consumed their soul? Like they were just devoid of anything human? Someone who, without speaking it, projects an energy that they just want you to cease to exist for no reason at all? This happened a while back. I was traveling from the Hudson Valley, New York area to West Virginia to the mountains. I love picking for antiques, so we stopped at an estate sale in Wilkes Bear, Pennsylvania. Followed the signs and led up to a small residential side street with rundown two family row houses with chip pastel paint and lots of satellite dishes. The door is open and kids and families are running around the street, but the energy feels tense and surreal. I see the doors to both living quarters in this particular two-family home are open, and I get very excited because these older type houses can sometimes be real interesting and hold a lot of treasures. But I see this older man on the porch, scrounging around, and for some reason, my heart drops. I say hello to him, to be polite, and he just snarled. Okay, whatever. So, I walked inside. Now, I am no stranger to old run-down houses. Sometimes the dirtier the better in the world of antiques and vintage. This house, however, was filled with just garbage. Just lots of empty vintage boxes. Cards. Rat shit. Anything that could have been something was just treated badly. It was broken or had goo in it with missing pieces. The whole house had really awful energy. Heavy, sadness holes in the laminate wooden paneled walls. And the worst was there was a really unnerving loud scratching sound coming from the walls. Everyone I spoke to ask a question just stared right through me like they didn't understand me and mumbled and walked off. They had nothing behind their eyes. The whole place was just sadness. Nothing was respected, whether it was the people who entered the cell before me or just how the people lived in the whole place was ransacked. I went outside to the back where more stuff was for sale mostly old car parts, and I feel my anxiety starting to build, and I'm not quite sure why. I decided it was the type of place to not make eye contact, mostly because of the weird energy. I start to feel overwhelmed in that way. I feel something to my left and decided to look up, and there's the tall, wiry man with a beat-up looking baseball hat and a flannel shirt I saw out front. He is legit menacing, glaring at me. I'm talking head down, furled brow. Glaring and burning a hole into my soul. I felt it in my solar plexus. It was so powerful. To be honest, it didn't even look like he had eyes in his sockets. Just darkness. I averted my eyes and pretended to look at a few other things, and I look and see he is still fixated on me. I turned to my boyfriend at the time and said, let's leave now. I put down the whole thing I wanted and just left. Once we got in the car, I asked how long that was going on for. He said, way too long. I felt if I stayed and caught his stare longer, he was going to hex me. I have never seen so much hatred and malice in someone I never met. It was all just so very creepy. A 
and that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true, unsettling, paranormal experiences. I'd like to take a moment and give a very special shout out to the reform members of the channel. Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Tina Mead, Colt Stone Wolf, Les Crispin, CAG, Denise Sess, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Chrissy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. Thank you all for your continued support of Back to Ashes, for without you, I would just be talking to the void. If you are asleep, I hope Slumberland is treating you kindly. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night. Peace, love, and light to you all.